Audio 2.01. I had a very memorable trip to India 30 years ago. I was travelling there with Jane, an Australian friend, for two months. We spent the first week staying by a lake in the mountains, which was very beautiful and relaxing. From there, we planned to travel by train to Varanasi, and visit Nepal before returning to India and spending a couple of weeks exploring Rajasthan. We knew the journey to Varanasi would be long and tiring, but we had no idea that it would change everything. The train journey usually takes twenty-four hours. We had booked a standard ticket, and the train was very busy. It was hot and crowded. People were everywhere. They were sleeping on the floor, crowded into all the seats, and even sitting on the roof. We tried to sleep, but it was difficult. By early morning, the family who were sitting next to us got off the train, and my friend and I moved into some seats next to an open window. We were exhausted. Our clothes were dirty, and we were thirsty and hungry. It was already very hot, and there was no air conditioning. Anyway, Jane said she didn't feel well and needed to go to the toilet. I decided to stay with the backpacks so we didn't lose our seats by the window. I waited and waited, but Jane didn't come back. I was beginning to get really worried. Suddenly, the train stopped in the middle of nowhere. The next thing I knew, I was taken off the train to meet a group of officials, who told me my friend had fallen off the train ten kilometers further back, and she was going to be taken by another train to Bareilly Station, where I would meet her. I was terrified. I got on the train and travelled another hour to Bareilly Station. I thought I would never see Jane again. Jane remembers that she woke up on the railway track. She had fallen off the train. She was standing near the open door of the train to get some fresh air when she fell out. A railway worker found her and carried her to lie under a tree out of the sun. She obviously needed to drink some water, so he set off on his bicycle and returned carrying a kettle of boiled water and gave her some to drink. Luckily, she still had her passport in her money belt, as she was terrified she would be lost forever. When I met her a few hours later at Bareilly Station, her knee was in a bandage, her clothes were torn, and she had no shoes. We went straight to the hospital, where a doctor treated her. We changed all our travel plans and spent the next ten days resting, as Jane couldn't walk properly. She had injured her knee. In the end. We arrived in Rajasthan much later than our original plans because of Jane's accident. In Jaipur, we stayed in a beautiful old hotel called the Bisau Palace. We met another traveler there who had just been looking at elephants. I married him two years later, and Jane came over from Melbourne for the wedding and was the guest of honor.